Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Talk of the Town podcast, where each week we bring you valuable insight and information that directly affects our local business community. I'm Danielle Hawley, and I'm the executive director of the best chamber of commerce around the Fontana Chamber of Commerce, and I'm proud to bring you our Talk of the Town podcast with my amazing co-host, Mr. Carlos Garcia of FYI Technologies. And today we're in for an extra big treat because Carlos, not only are you co-hosting with me, but you are our special guest. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> I was just going to say, no pressure. I'm on the hot seat today, right? So no. I can't ask those questions. No pressure, my friend. Uh, well, hey, I really enjoyed um, kicking off our Chamber podcast with you. Uh, I know last week we had Cedar House Life Change Center, and we got to hear from Melissa and Jake and all the amazing work that they're doing. Uh, but this week, I really wanted to focus on you um, and let our audience get to know you a little bit better. I know they see your smiley face up here every week with me, uh, but they may not know you. And so this is our chance to really find out who is Carlos Garcia. So why don't you start by telling us uh, who you are and and how we came to be on this podcast together. <laughs> so th this was a, a great conversation and, a, and I'm glad that you um, you actually reached out uh, to me when we were talking about and discussing some great ideas for the Fontana Chamber. So I appreciate uh, you putting me on the spot, right? So <laughs> people get to know me a little bit. Uh, but in all seriousness, folks, uh, my name is Carlos Garcia. I own a company called FY Technologies. Um, I've always classified myself as not your typical IT guy because, as we all know, not every IT company or guy is created equal, right? Um, so one of the things that why I started this business was basically be, I wanted to give folks options, right? There's two sides to our to our company. One is taking care of all your technical needs, the IT piece, everything from you know your average phone systems to you know, your internet, everything that you need for an office to run or a small business to run. And then the other half is if you are a business, then you also need some branding, right? You need some marketing, you need a website, you need some social media. Um, and in some cases, some, some clients also like we're doing now, uh, decide to do podcasts as well too. But I will tell you that um, I always joke around that I started as a, uh, you know, was born a nerd at 13, right? That was my first ever introduction with the Apple computer. So dating myself way back to 1984, back when, you know, everything was was uh, branching out and so forth. But it was something that just caught me by just in it. I volunteered. It was uh, to run the lab. My teachers didn't want to do it. And for me, I thought, OK, it gets me out of class for an hour. So I was like, yeah, that's a win win all around. Right. <laughs> So I remember that in school, you got, we love that. And I, in my right? day, I think I'm a little bit younger than you, but we got to go play Oregon trail. And I some of you oh, yes. remember Oregon yep. trail, <laughs> that yep. was our life. Uh, but the computer lab was always a really fun place, but I remember those old Mac computers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so that kind of just got the bug in me. And I, I remember telling my parents at that age, I said, Hey, when I grow up, I want to do something with computers. So I'm fortunate to this day, I'm still doing what I set out to do as a kid. Um, I will tell you a little bit about my background as far as education. I do have a bachelor's in IT. I do have a master's also from Pepperdine University. And I also have a teaching credential from University of San Diego. And I share this with you guys, not because I'm bragging, but it's it's something to tell you that this isn't just a hobby. You know, I decided to do computers one day and here I am. No, I've actually gone to school for it. And I love um, just making a difference for folks. And I think that's what separates my, my business, separates me from everyone else that I want to have that long-term relationship and connection with folks. And that's what we're all about, you know? Yeah. Relationships are so important. Um, and I want to go back quickly to your company because you have a really cute motto and logo for your company. What is it? If technology makes you cry, call FYI. <laughs> that's it, right? And every time I say, and I'm glad you remember that because it, it's simple, it's short, and it always brings people a smile, right? Yeah. It always brings out that smile and it's and it's just creates a conversational piece right out of the gate. Yeah. And, and really, when it comes down to it, we all go through it, right? Even me and tech, sometimes technology makes me cry and then I'm <laughs> kind of messed up because I don't know who else to call, right? But um, all joking aside, though, it's we deal with it every day. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to to be complicated. And I know that sometimes we come across a uh, panic mode, right? And, and I want to make sure that you have somebody that you can call, you know, talk you off the ledge and, and everything is going <laughs> to- Don't throw that computer out the window. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. 
Well, that's awesome. And I think too, oh my gosh, I mean, we can't really touch anything today without being impacted by technology, right? I mean, it's come so far so quickly from the time that you started back in the 80s. Uh, and talk about job security, right? I mean, technology, computers, it's all embedded in our everyday life. So I think you picked a great field. Um, and I know we talked about it in my podcast, but I too was a teacher. So I love when you bring that up because I feel like that's something that uh, most people wouldn't know about you, um, that you know you have your, your experience there. And so can we talk a little bit about that? Um, what was your time in education and then you know, kind of making the shift back to your company? So I started actually in education as an IT director, um, kind of worked my way up through different districts. So I did a lot of the staff development, train teachers, train administrators, kids. I will tell you, I will share, I will share something with you that's very uh, dear to me. And it's I was actually one of the first directors to set up a, um, a cyber camp for special needs kids, which was awesome. Right. So I had a week long of teaching a group of students. Um, how to use a camera, how to how to videotape, how to use PowerPoint to create a presentation. And then we went through an entire week with this. And what was awesome about it was that the following week, I invited all of their parents. I had like red butcher paper down the aisle from the district office so they can come like an Academy Awards night for them oh. and showcase what they did. I will tell you there wasn't a dry eye, you know, in the house. But the point of it was that, you know, we talk about education. We know that not all, not all kids learn the same way. Yeah. And so we've had a, a cookie cutter system for a very long time. And so the point to doing this was that kids can learn at any level, as long as you're, you're, uh, you're kind of tweaking that, that formula, right. To make sure that th it enhances them. Yeah. And so by getting them engaged in technology is something that they're not used to doing. Um, and it worked out great because, you know, now the other side of this is now parents want to want to have more of that same kind of teaching so their kids can learn as well too. But I got to tell you, it was one of the most amazing things. Um, and to this day, I still run into two students that I had and, and um, just a level of difference that you see with kids. Um, and especially when you have teachers like you that they care, you know, they care about them. They, they want to help them succeed. It's not just, it's not just a job. I mean, we're, we're in it to make a difference for kids. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I want to shift gears real quick here, and I want to talk about the chamber. Um, obviously, we're here doing the podcast, and you know, you're from Upland, uh, so I know that um, you know being a part of the Fontana Chamber. You don't live in Fontana, uh, so how did you come to be a part of the uh, the Chamber of Commerce here in Fontana? And let's talk about your journey uh, to where we are today. Sure. You know, it's it's no secret that I've, um, I'm i a big networker. I, I go to different events. I've joined over the years, different uh, chambers, different organizations as well, too. Um, but I will tell you that the moment, the first time I was invited to the Fontana Chamber, my mind was just blown. And, and the, the reason why it was blown is because I remember back in the old days, um, I used to work for an attorney and he would take me like to Rotary, different chamber events. And it was all about business, right? And so I haven't seen that in, in quite a long time. So when I walked in the very first time to, to a chamber luncheon for Fontana, I was greeted. I mean, everything, it, it, it was just so professional, so friendly. I sat down, talked to folks at my table. I had other people come up to me, introduce themselves. And when you got up there and, you know, and started the, the luncheon, um, what was awesome to see is this is all about business, right? There is no, um, extra, you know, I guess I, I would, for lack of a better word, extra fluff when you're up there or whatever. This is very, this is very, um, you know, business oriented based. You have an agenda, you follow straight, straight through, you highlight businesses. And to me, that was like, okay, I haven't seen this in a long time. And this is what really business is all about. And what greater opportunity um, to be able to have that very first experience. It was just like mind blowing. I think I joined either that same day or the or the, the the next month after that, but I haven't looked back because you guys are doing some amazing things and just blowing up the chamber, really helping small business community, and it's just it, it's it's remarkable. And I think you guys should definitely be committed. You especially being the executive director, you know, you're <laughs> taking this to a next level. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, it's it's definitely an honor and a privilege to be a part of the Fontana Chamber. Um, you know, and we I always go back to our mission statement, and this is what I tell our team. We're the advocate voice and resource to our local business community. And so that just really 
needs to be the filter, uh, which we, you know, process everything through. And so thank you for sharing that. That just reiterates, okay, we're hitting the mark. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Uh, but we're so very thankful to have you. Um, and I actually knew you before you joined the chamber. Um, and I'm going to let out a little secret here. Maybe it's not so secret. Uh, maybe some folks know, I'm sure if they live in Upland, uh, they would know, but you're also involved in politics, right? You are a sitting city councilman. I am. I'm actually city councilman. I'm going on my uh, three years and a half. I ran the first time for a two-year seat, uh, which was interesting. That was my first introduction to politics and campaigning and so forth. Um, I was very blessed. That I won. Back, so. <laughs> right? You so I uh, I uh, actually ended up winning like 47, with 47% of the vote against three other individuals as well, too. So my message and my authenticity came across, and I'm very grateful for that. And then this last election... Um, I was able to run unopposed, you know, so, you know, wow. that I'm hoping that I continue to make a difference in our communities. And that's really why I got involved in politics. It's really about, you know, talk is cheap. You can complain how you want behind the keyboard, but at the end of the day, who's going to step up and try to make a difference for everyone, not just for a specific group, but, it, you know, for everyone involved as well, too. So, yep, councilman has uh, been, like I said, three and a half years and still going, so. That's fantastic. Well, I know uh, the city of Upland truly appreciates you and your service to the city. Um, I know the Fontana Chamber, we appreciate you and all that you do for us being a part of the podcast uh, and just being a chamber member um, and being a part of the chamber family. That's so valuable and so important. And uh, I really value the insight and wisdom as well. Um, I feel like you see things through a slightly different lens because you are sitting in that elected seat. Um, and there's something else, right, that we should know uh, here in 2024 uh, that you've taken your your small business experience and your your experience there on city council and you have another seat that you're vying for yeah and and thank you for bringing that up i am currently running for a uh, state senate for district 29 uh, it's it's something that um an opportunity that came about to make a huge difference right mm -hmm. we all know that um that we need change right and and what's that change going to look like and for me it's always been about what you see is what you get i'm never going to tell you something that you just do to uh, just for me to tell you something on there, right? For me, it's all about no matter if I'm in council, no matter if I run for Senate seat, at the end of the day, the policies and, and things that I will be looking at to help our community, to help public safety, to help our veterans, to help the small business community and our infrastructure, you know, it affects me first as a resident, right? It doesn't affect me. I don't look at it as, okay, you're going in as a Senate. No, it's how is this affecting me as a resident? How is it affecting you as a resident and everyone else? And how do we bring that change, right? Uh, so it's important to me that we get back to common sense. We really focus on, on public safety, making sure that uh, those resources are available and, and try to return some of these um, some of these outdated decisions that are really hindering our, our, our law enforcement. You know, uh, one thing that I will tell you also for veterans, I'm a huge advocate for veterans. Um, for me, it's as an immigrant, uh, what they fought for and our freedoms and all that. It's It's very important to me that we acknowledge and we help them out any which way that we can. Uh, in my eyes or in my opinion, and I'm sure it's the opinion of a lot of folks, we should not ever see a veteran sleeping on the outside in, in the rain, you know, because they're homeless as well. So not to mention everyone else, but to me, it's more important with also with the veterans as well, too. And, you know, for the small business community, let's face it, I think COVID, you know, did a hard hit on a lot of businesses. I think we're not out of the woods with that, but we're also encountering issues that are not that are not helping our, our business community right now too. So as a business owner going into this race as well, it's, it's to create this advocacy, right? To help help our small business community provide resources, provide uh, additional uh, communication with them. What's what's really, you know, hindering them from moving forward and, and trying to help out which we can. And as we all know too, you know, a lot of our cities are, are just a tad bit old, right? They need a lot of help infrastructure as well too. So it's, I'm hoping that I can be that voice or that advocate for not just the city of Upland or Fontana, but for everybody that's included in, in District 29. This is a race for all of us, not just for one particular group, period. I love that. Um, and, and it's so true because if you want to have a successful, thriving 
business environment, you have to have all of those things, right? You have to have uh, public safety, you have to have infrastructure, all of those things tied together. People aren't going to want to invest money in an area and bring their business if it's not safe, um, right. if there aren't roads to get to and from work, right? Our workforce. Uh, and that's one thing here in Fontana. I know we're big on live, work and play in Fontana. And so um, I love that mindset of really being cognizant of the resources and the environment that we're creating to make sure that it is business friendly and what better person to do that than you, a business owner here in our region. Um, I wanted you to, to expand a little bit. You mentioned that you were an immigrant. Can you talk about your story coming to the United States? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I came here when I was probably about seven and a half years old. Um, I lived through a war. I'm from Nicaragua, Central America. Uh, I lived through the war for about two years. And when I say I lived through the war, I literally lived through the war. I mean, we had to, you know, sleep on the floor. There was bullets flying, bombs dropping around us. Um, so I will tell you that when we finally left, uh, it was first my father and mom uh, sent my grandmother and my sister and I first. And they were trying to shoot our plane down, you know, when we were uh, taken off. Uh, I didn't get to see my parents for a year. And then when my parents were finally able to come to the U.S., uh, my mom was handicapped and my dad worked for the government at the time. He was supposed to just drop her off. And he knew that, you know, th there was more to this than just dropping off and so forth. So uh, he immediately applied for, for a political asylum, which fortunately, you know, he was able to maintain because the day after my, my mom and dad got here, they actually gathered all of his colleagues and friends and executed everybody in the plaza to make a point. And that would have been my dad, you know, by the grace of God one day later. Mm. So for me coming here, it, it was, you know, we came with nothing, but we always had, you know, we always had food. We always had clothing secondhand or thirdhand. It didn't matter, but we always were taken care of. My dad worked his tail off um, as a, as a custodian for a hospital because he didn't know the language. Mm. Uh, but one of the things I will tell you that from this story um, that I'm sharing with you that always stands out for me is that we met so many individuals who were um, strangers, right, um, but willing to help. Mm. And now to me, it was just, you know, as a kid kind of seeing this whole concept, like people we didn't know wanting to help us to get ahead and so forth. And it's something that has stuck with me as a kid. It's something that I pride myself on teaching others kids when I was, you know, teaching classes as well, too. And it's like, you have to remember that there's always somebody that's helped you to get to the next step. Nobody's self-made, right? Somebody took the time to help you. And I think now as, as an adult, it's it's our responsibility to make sure that we pay it forward, help those that can't help themselves also, you know, which is um, to this day, it's, it's again, why another reason why I got so involved with politics is to be able to have that voice at the table that can help the people that, that can't help themselves with that, too. But um, yeah, I, I I still pride myself with that, you know, and, and the more we can pay it forward with folks, the more we can pay it forward with individuals who need our help, then, you know, let's do it. It'll be a better place for all of us, for sure. Yeah, I love that. Um, well, thank you for being so open and honest about your past and what led you here. Um, if people want to find out more information about you, your business, your campaign, where could they find that information? Sure. I will actually be putting um, the link below us here uh, shortly, and then people can, um, you know, follow me on on social media, whether it's it's business related or if it's the campaign uh, related as well too. You'll have access to the website and and all of that as well too. So. I love it. Well, um, let's switch gears now. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, but Carlos, we have so enjoyed getting to know you a little bit more. Um, and I know we see your face up here every week, uh, but now we get to know some more of the backstory behind you. What makes you who you are, um, all the amazing things that you're doing. And uh, just from me personally, on behalf of the Chamber, um, we are so very thankful that you partnered with us to make this podcast happen. Um, and just being a really great uh, member of our business community. Community. We appreciate you and all that you bring to this. Um, and I'm just super excited. You know, we're in um, our early stages here of some of our episodes. I know last week we heard from Cedar House. Uh, before that, I know I got to share my story. Um, coming up, we're going to be interviewing our chamber president, Mr. Phil Cothran. And we have so many exciting things uh, that we're going to be covering on this show. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Uh, but again, coming right back down to the chamber being the advocate voice and resource to our business community. So we appreciate you guys 
tuning in with us, checking out what's going on with the chamber in a little bit longer format, right? We get to sit down right. and really dig into some of the details. Uh, but the Talk of the Town podcast, we're rolling. Uh, it's happening every week. You don't want to miss it. We will either have um, someone from our chamber board, some of our, we're going to bring in some of our chamber staff, uh, but we just really want to be really, truly authentic and relevant with what's happening today. Uh, you know, give you those great insight and resources uh, so that you can make great business decisions uh, and just learn a little bit more about us and what we do. Uh, so we appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe, like button, share it, all those things. Uh, we just want to get the word out so that people know what we're doing here. But Carlos, we loved having you on the Talk of the Town podcast today. Uh, thank you again for sharing your story. And we don't want to miss next week, right? Because we have Phil Cawthorn coming right. up. <laughs> and, and I want to actually say one thing also when we talked about the chamber one of the key things that I forgot to mention that you brought up many times is it's another uh, great great way to say that the chamber is a family right and you you bring that up quite a bit and I think that's that was the the, the, the last thing that you said okay I'm in so I want to make sure you guys were aware the Fontana yeah. Montana Chamber is a family. We are a family and our family is growing. We're definitely growing. Um, you know, we're, we're adding more members and it, it's just phenomenal to see, but we still maintain those relationships and that's make or break. And this is what I tell the staff all the time. If you don't have good, solid relationships, then we have no foundation to build on. And so if relationships are everything to us, uh, our members, this is why we exist. We're here for you. Um, so again, the podcast, just another little resource uh, thing that we can throw your way and hopefully brighten your day, make you laugh a little, uh, you know, give you some good insight, uh, but really just give you a closer look at what we're doing here. But Carlos, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and we can't wait for next week. Got another right. episode coming next week. <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. It was awesome uh, to be on the other side of the hot seat. So. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend. All right. Until next week, Talk of the Town podcast. We'll see you guys later. All right. Take care, you guys.